Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be setting up the EasyCAD 2 software on the Monport GI30 fiber laser machine. And by the end of the video, I'm going to be engraving the steel plate. Hi everyone, welcome to the laser channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and this is going to be a video, once again, all dedicated on the GI30 fiber machine by Monport. The software installation that I'm doing today is going to be perfect if you have one of these machines and you'd like to follow along as you do the software installation on your machine. It's also going to be perfect for those of you who are looking at this machine and you'd like to know what it takes to get the machine set up along with installing the software. Let's get started by covering a couple of the things that we're going to need to fully set up the machine using the EasyCAD 2 software. First of all is going to be the included USB drive. This is going to have all of the software files on that we'll need. I also recommend having the owner's manual next to it. This does a great job of helping guide through the steps of the EasyCAD 2 software along with, of course, watching this video. We'll also need the included steel ruler when we set up the focus on the machine. And of course, since we are going to be running the machine, we will want to be wearing the included safety glasses. And of course, I'm going to need some metal to mark. This, I have mild steel. Stainless steel also works good as a part of this setup process. This piece of steel, by the way, I've been hanging on to this for nearly 20 years. I've moved countless times during that time, and I've tripped over this how many times I couldn't tell you. But today is the day it's actually going to be put to use. Now, with all the materials covered, let's jump into the computer and start installing the software. I'm going to start by copying the files on the USB drive over to a folder on my computer. I'll take a quick look inside of this folder. We've got a, several more folders. And what's really neat is Monport included the entire EasyCAD 2 user manual. This shows you everything you could ever possibly want to know about the Easy2CAD software. It also includes the PDF version of the manual. With all the files copied over, the first thing that I need to do is turn power on the laser machine. With the power button pressed, if nothing happens, chances are the emergency button in the front is pressed. I don't want to reach underneath the laser lens, so I'm going to go around to the side and reset that emergency button. And with that emergency button reset, the machine comes alive. The next thing I need to do is head over to Device Manager. When I scroll through Device Manager, we're going to see that under Other Devices, there's a problem with USB LM CV4. This is the controller board inside of the machine and Windows 10 doesn't know what to do with it. And we're going to fix that by updating the file provided by us on that USB drive. To do this, I'll right click on it and update driver, select browse my computer for drivers, and I'm going to click on browse, and I'm going to navigate over to my GI30 Monport folder, over to driver, and this computer is running Windows 10, and here's the file folder, I will click OK. I'll make sure that this is checked, include subfolders and click next. And it will install the driver. And it asks if I would like to do that, if I trust that source. And I'll click yes, install. And it says Windows successfully updated the driver. This is great. And I can click close. This is the hardest part of installing the software for EasyCAD 2 software. Where it once said other devices, it now says BJJCV device and laser mark controller board version 2.0 USB. That is the board inside of the machine. This all looks good. I can navigate to where I copied all of the software files off the USB drive and I'll go into software 15 folder 
I'll scroll down a little bit and I'm looking for the file called EasyCAD 2. This is going to be the software uh, icon that I click on to start the software. Now, I don't wanna have to navigate to this folder and scroll down through this list every time I wanna run the software for the laser machine. So a little tip, I'm going to click and drag this all the way down to my taskbar and pin it down there. And now I can click on that and it will start the software and it's in a very convenient location. This dialog box is the license agreement. It's in a different language and this screen is going to pop up every time I start the software up. I'll click I agree. And I get an error saying that it cannot open a correct file. I'll just click OK. We're going to fix that right away. I'll navigate to the bottom of the screen and this parameter F3 button, I will click that. And that brings up a dialog box. What I'm looking at is this area here. I want to make sure that this is checked. Use the correction file. And that correction file, it's a way of saying the correction file for the lens that is installed on the machine. And as you've guessed it, that file is also included on the USB drive. I'll click on the double carrots here to point it in the correct location for that file. I'll just need to navigate back to where I copied all of those files. That's why it's important to make sure that that file, all those files are copied to a pretty convenient place because as you're seeing, we navigate back to that multiple times. I'll double click on software 15 file and then once again, and JCZ15, this is the file I'm looking for. I'll click on that once, then open, then okay. And now we're all set. One thing that I'd like to do is I want to head over to view and I want to turn on the grid work. That looks a lot better now. This is all that's needed for the software installation and setup of the EasyCAD 2 software up to the GI30 by Monport. I'm now ready for the next step and that is to find the true focus of the laser machine down to the workspace. My machine from the factory has a sticker on the side. They're measured focal distance. I want to double check that. The GI30 is equipped with three red dot lasers to help assist getting the focus set. These dots come from two laser emitters right here and right here with the third coming through the lens itself through the laser umbilical cord in the back and that is coming from the laser source itself. I am going to be converging those three dots into one by using the electronic focusing. To get started, I'm going to press the down key and get this pretty darn close. That looks good. The other thing that I'm going to do is look on the side of my machine and your machine will have something around that number. And don't worry if yours says something slightly different, I'm gonna be running the laser to find the true focus. And what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to shift the laser head up and down, and I'm going to look for the most sparks coming off of this steel plate. And I'm also going to listen for when that laser marking is the loudest. I'm gonna start out by grabbing the circle draw tool, and I'm going to draw a circle. I only need that to be about five millimeters. So I've got that resized. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to go back over to my mouse cursor and I get some more menu items up here. I'm most concerned with this icon right here and this is put at origin. This is going to put it in the middle of the workspace and this is kind of what we're going to do with everything when using a fiber laser. I'm going to uncheck uh, default parameters and a speed, I'm going to change this to 800 millimeters per second, a power level of 65%. Frequency can be somewhere around 20. The rest of that looks good. And again, I'm going to hit apply. This is also going to be one of the things in EasyCAD 2. Whenever we make a change on something, whether it's an object or a run setting, we'll be clicking apply. I can navigate 
to this F1 button here, red, this will frame out where that circle is going to appear. That looks good. I can hit stop. I am going to highlight the circle one more time. I'm going to navigate up to the top here to hatch. And this is going to just show me what the hatch type looks like. And for right now, this looks perfectly fine. I'll hit OK. I'm also going to check continuous because I want this just to continually engrave that circle while I find the perfect height of the laser head. And this part is where I do need to have the laser glasses on. This is all set. This is also going to be the first time that the laser is firing. It's going to be pretty exciting. I'm going to click on the mark button. And there we go. And now I'm just going to bump the focus up a little bit. And we'll see that our engraving effect goes away. And when I start moving the laser head down, it starts coming back in. And if I move down too far, I lose the laser uh, engraving effect. I think somewhere around there looks pretty good. It also sounds pretty good as well. From the factory, they have a measurement of 312 millimeters. When I look on my scale, I'm reading uh, 317 millimeters. So this is a good thing to do is just go back and double check the actual focal length of your laser machine. I'm now ready to move on to the next step, and that is checking and setting the alignment of the laser head down to the work surface. I think that this is an important step because this machine has all these rows and rows of really nice threaded holes for attaching work down to that surface. The machine also comes with a set of these acrylic guides, and this is great for setting up on the machine and then batch engraving things like aluminum business cards. And I can just draw in a box and I'm going to uncheck that and individually type in 150 millimeters, 150 millimeters. And by the way, I'm getting that size, that 150 millimeters workspace, uh, both from the literature on the machine, but also every lens on every fiber laser is going to have uh, the work area that it will project to. With that set, I will click apply. I'll go back to my cursor and that will pop up this uh, toolbar here. And again, I'm going to click on this button here and this is going to center that box I just drew onto the work area. And I'll press the red button, the F1 button. Here's the box that's being framed out. When I'm looking at this hole, I can see that my red frame line just clips the top of that hole. When I go to the other side, I can see that it isn't quite touching it. So I am going to turn that frame function off and then take these two screws underneath here and I'm going to pivot that head until I have the perfect alignment. Things are moving right along. The software installation and setup didn't take very long. We check the true focus distance of the laser. We even align the laser head up to the work area. And I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, bonus content here at the very end to kind of get you pointed in the right direction when using the EasyCAD software. For this, I'm going to put that piece of sheet metal back in the, the work area. And I'm just gonna show you just some different things within the EasyCAD software. I think the first thing that I'll go and do is show an engraving using some text. I'll grab the text tool off to the side here and click anywhere within the work area. And then down here is where I'm going to actually change that text. For this, I can type in anything. I think I'll put in uh, GI30. And I can also pull down this menu system here and then I have access to all of the, uh, the fonts that I would normally find on my computer. And I'll change that. And up here, I can change the overall height to let's say five millimeters. I'm going to close this little box so that when I change the height, the, uh, the width of that changes with the same ratio. 
And once again, because I changed the text, uh, I changed the font, and I changed the size, I'm going to hit apply, and it's going to send all of those changes out to the workspace. I'll zoom in a little bit, and we can see what that looks like. With my cursor on the mouse, I can grab this and I can move it all around the screen. But once again, what we normally do as standard practice with a fiber laser is we always engrave directly underneath the lens, centered as best as possible. There will be some projects where it's gonna make sense to have it offset and it's okay. But just as a general rule, we try and set the origin of our work exactly within the center of our work area. Next, let's check out the layer and the parameter settings. These settings are what's going to change the color and the texture of what our engraving looks like. When I first start the program out, when I start drawing things, boxes, it's going to default to layer zero, which is a black layer. And it's also going to default having this check use default parameters. I always just uncheck this. Before I get into some of the parameters down here, I want to compare it to uh, something like a diode machine or a CO2 laser machine. If you're familiar with those, there's only ever two settings that you're really concerned about, and that is the speed of the machine and the power of the laser beam. When we talk about a fiber laser, there's going to be three things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to have the speed, we're going to have the power, but now there's this third element, and that is going to be the frequency. Generally, the lower the frequency, the more energy we're going to be driving into our work material. So it's going to dig deeper into that material. It's going to add typically more texture, if you will. And if I run a higher frequency, this is generally going to create a lighter color engraving. So um, just by changing that frequency without changing the power or the speed, I can get a dark engraving or I could get something that would look like a frosted white engraving on this steel plate. There's also going to be a fourth setting that I'm going to be utilizing and that's because this machine has a MOPA power supply and that enables a Q pulse width. I recommend if you're just starting out with a fiber machine, leave this Q pulse the same number and just utilize the frequency, power, and speed. You'll be able to gain a lot of knowledge with that. And once you start becoming comfortable with that, you can start changing the Q pulse width and you'll be able to have a better appreciation of how that setting will affect the engraving. Now with these four different variables for creating engraving, I definitely recommend keeping a log journal book next to your computer and writing down your settings along with the results that you get. If you wanna take it one step further as you're learning the effect of different settings of your machine, get a piece of large sheet metal like this, and when you're doing your test engravings, actually type out what your settings are and then once you fill up this piece of sheet metal, you'll have a record of what settings looked like what. That's a really great way to build up a knowledge basis and experience with your new laser machine. The last thing I'd like to show you for the settings before I actually start doing some different engravings is I wanna click on this button up here and this is going to be different hatch patterns. And hatch patterns is going to be how the lines of the laser scan to fill in what would be our engraving. Right now I have hatch number one, it is enabled. And the type, we can look at this picture and it's going to give us a diagram of how the scan lines are going to be from the laser head. And I can scroll through this by just clicking on it. And I like this one. This is the one that I usually use. It tells me the line space. I usually use 0.02. It's a really good default to use. And by the way, that 0.02 millimeter interval equates to about 1,000 lines per inch. Another really common thing to do is to change the scan angle. Right now, it's just going to go across flat like that. And for most cases, there's nothing wrong with that. But just generally, particularly when I'm doing text like I am in this example, I like to have that set at 45 degrees. When I click on the next hatch pattern, 
uh, we'll see that I can't click on anything, and that is because it is not enabled. I can enable that. We're going to see I have the same type of hatch that I did on hatch number one, and I can click in between there. Actually, I lied, and I'm going to click on this until they match. And this one, I'm going to put in the same line spacing of 0.02 millimeters. And for the scan angle, instead of zero degrees, which again would be that way, I'm going to do the opposing 45 degree angle. In EasyCAD, this is how we create a hatch pattern. But I'm ready to put some safety glasses on and I can hit mark. And this one, I'll try this on a different layer. And to put this graphic on a different layer, I'm going to click on that color and now it puts it on a different one. It's not by double clicking up here. It needs to have the object selected and then you can click on the different layers down here. And once again, I'm going to deselect use default parameters. And this, I'm going to slow this down. I'm gonna keep the power up. I'm gonna turn the frequency down so it's gonna have more of an impact going into that engraving. Once again, I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to check my hatch patterns and this hatch pattern, this is going to draw rings and rings and rings all the way around and I like the way that that looks. And because it's doing that, I no longer have the choice of picking a scan angle of what direction the laser is going to scan as it does the engraving. The line spacing still looks good. I like that and I'll click OK. I'll frame this out by clicking the red button and this will be the size. I like the way that looks. I'll hit stop and now I can hit mark. And hopefully the camera can pick this up, but it's, it's drawing out each individual shape, starting from the outside, working to the center. Thanks for joining me in this video. I had a fantastic time sharing with you how to install and set up the EasyCAD software with the GI30 laser machine by Monport. I hope that you'll join me in the next video where I'll be installing and setting up the Lightburn software. Until next time, learn, create, and share.